Hello, welcome back to Blackjack. Before we begin today's death battle, there's something I want to share with you. You see, death battle also does DBX, and I tried to do a reaction to their first one of the season, Gohan versus Superboy. I got a copyright claim that was held up. <sighs> They're already using a lot of material that isn't theirs, yet we can't react to it. And this isn't even Death Battle doing it. This is their parent company of Rooster Teeth. And they haven't been responding to any of my uh, attempts to reach them. So frankly, I don't know what's going on. So if this video here is several days late or weeks late or whatever, then that's why. Um, it's basically never been posted, this one. So, um, I don't know. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not at my house and I'm not at my parents' house. Uh, picture of flowers up there. Um, my mom rarely gets days off so she has like a week off in a row so she's like let's go to hood river i'm like okay we'll go to hood river so yes we are in hood river oregon you know i know you suck okay your username is i suck i hit pause oh yeah you suck because you're dead freaking no oh okay fine i'm just gonna leave the page add source now, sad little note before we start. Um, you know how I always try to dress appropriately? Um, for these things. Have you heard of hymns? They're all about making you look and feel good. Thank um, you. Know, I always try to dress appropriately for whatever I have. And no but uh, for whatever the matchup is. But today, I do have a Full Metal Alchemist shirt, but I'm not going to wear it probably ever again because it was what I was wearing when Lawrence died, and, and she died in my hand, so. <sighs> right up against the shirt, so. Needless to say, uh... average person can take on so these kids can master no, them it. with a vengeance go back we live in and okay here you people you people there are on thin ice not you guys the elements make up every aspect of the world we live in and no average person can tame them but okay so it turns out i was really master close. them with a vengeance like tang the avatar and All right. Edward Elric, the Full Metal Alchemist. Yep. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Got kind of 8-bit there going Water. on. Earth. Fire. Air. Heart! <laughs> Once the four nations lived in harmony, that show has made a comeback. could even learn to bend their nation's element. But only the Avatar could master all four, and it's their duty to protect the balance between these nations. And since there's always got to be an Avatar around, a new one is born whenever the last one dies. All right. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Attempting to yep. conquer the other three nations, the Avatar would inevitably be their Damn. biggest obstacle. Man, they'd even go after a kid? Living among well, of course the they would. Aang was an energetic and dutiful 12 years old. The OD age? Of his destiny. He was the newest incarnation of the Egg Avatar. But he totally wussed out, ran away from home, and got frozen in ice for a hundred years. What the hell? That's not what I'd do if I found out I was an awesome elemental badass. I'd so it'd be more like Korra, huh? Breaking the door that. down and going, I'm the Avatar! He's 12. But running away actually saved his life, as the Fire Nation knew the next Avatar would be an Air Nomad and slaughtered them all in a horrific surprise How would they attack. know? But the poor kid wouldn't be stuck in ice forever. He was eventually rescued by some new friends and began his quest to learn the other elements and save the world. 
And as an air nomad, he can really bend the wind to his will. Cool, he cool. He can use air bending to create whirlwinds and tornadoes or slice through solid stone. And Ooh. he can fly! Whee! Well, it's not exactly flying boomstick. What he actually does is manipulate the airplanes to keep aloft. That's why he carries a glider, complete with snacks. Well, of course, you gotta have snacks. Oh, well, I'm sure that'll come in handy. Whatever, if it looks like a he duck, can... it sounds okay, like a Okay, so he does grow hair. Or I guess the flying avatar guy. But ducks actually can fly. Anyway, Aang can use air in pretty much every aspect of his life. Like for shields, increasing his speed, improving agility, adjusting his body temperature, and even focusing his breath to use as an attack. After he learned waterbending from Paku and Katara, Aang can make whips, knives, and literal tsunamis. Hey, I can do that too. Just give me a pool and watch this cannonball fly. Does <laughs> that mean I'm a waterbender? Uh, sure. Waterbenders sure, why not? Can manipulate steam and ice. Just like how I, the great waterbender Boomstick the Wet, will use my the wet to swim through this frozen block. You what? Yeah. Uh, waterbending 101. <sighs> you could be jealous. Oh, Wouldn't wow. that be more just the realm of an airbender or even a firebender? Powers activate! <laughs> Give it time. Ha! Success! Like airbending. Water bending requires a nearby source of water to use, like a pond or a filled bottle. The same goes for earth bending, which Aang learned from his mentor Toph. Earth bending is all we've covered before. And, people, and a bunch of other cool stuff, like making. Oh, he has seismic sense too. Okay. Yeah, metal bending, from what I understand, didn't exist until Toph was older. Is that right? That she invented it as an adult. Um. Hmm. What bending would be a cross between metal bending and water bending, wouldn't it? You see, I um, I've never actually watched the show. I've only seen one full episode, and of all things, it was the one where they all watch a play about themselves. <laughs> and Toph is played by this big buff guy, and she's in the audience like. <laughs> And earthquakes and causing the ground to swallow you up, which is kind of creepy, actually. Last but certainly not least, Aang learned the art of firebending from his longtime rival, Prince Zuko. Unlike the other arts, firebenders can actually create fire to use at will. Interesting. Firebending is so goddamn powerful, it's even got the deadliest bending technique of all shooting lightning. Well, only the most advanced firebenders can cast lightning. This said he which didn't is have that. An instant kill move. While Aang never learned the move itself, he has learned how to redirect it through his body. Ah. But even after learning the four elements, Aang got to meet one last master bender. Who taught him the art of manipulating a person's life energy. The purest form of bending. It's super dangerous though, and one mistake could tear up Aang's soul. And with it, Aang defeated the Fire Lord and brought peace to the world at large. Well, with that, and with his super form, the Avatar Oh yeah, state. and another thing I know is Fire Lord is uh, voiced by Mark Hamill. This is, because is it the Ozai? Ozai? On the power and wisdom of all previous ah. Avatar incarnations. Though it is extremely risky, as dying while in the Avatar state ends the cycle of reincarnation permanently. Dang. Why would he care if he's dead anyway? Whatever. The coolest thing about the Avatar state is it stress. makes you glow like this. Behold! <laughs> Why am I doing that? Oh, I, I drink a bunch of glow sticks. You need to go to the doctor. Yeah. Like right now. <laughs> My liver's process way worse than this. Have it. I brought cut Oh down my from. god, shut up. <laughs> well, with or without the Avatar State, Aang is plenty powerful. He has the ability or to move gigantic stone columns deal. and even carve canyons around an entire city. Not only has he survived hits from earthbending kings and massive explosions, he threw this gigantic column of rock at the Fire Lord. To get the column's mass, we compared Aang's height against it and determined it must weigh 9,500 tons. Aang's super fast, too. With airbending, he can run on water. Which, given his size, requires a movement speed of well over 67 miles per hour. Wow. He used airbending to block a giant column-destroying explosive attack from the best-named character on the show. 
combustion man. And he's proven Not the boulder. Lightning from the fire lord himself. Taking into account the distance between them and how far Aang's arm had to move to catch the lightning, he would have to react at least 155 times faster than sound. Ooh. He is pretty unused to violence, though. I mean, he's a vegetarian pacifist for crying out loud. But while he may seem like just a kid, Aang still saved the world and led it into a peaceful future. To him, bending is elementary. If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. Cool. Alchemists of old once tried to turn lead into gold with not great results. But in the country of Amestris, the ancient science of alchemy is actually possible by using the Earth's natural energy to reshape the molecular structure of various objects. Yep. And by drawing a circle thingy. A transmutation circle, which most alchemists use except for the youthful prodigy, Edward Elric. So how do you come oh, up with those? You just, like, start drawing and, uh... See what happens. Little badass. Height plus arrow. A bit touchy about his size. <laughs> hey, if I lost my mom like he did. He's five five with the hair sprout. He's not that short. I'd get so he'd be what five three? Too, but Ed and his brother Alpha. And I guess for an eighteen year old. Still. So they went for it. Oh. But things went no. so real fast. Hold on. It says he's four eight, but the hair sprout doesn't come up that high. You know how people say they'd give an arm and a leg for something? Yep. Well, Ed literally did, and poor Al lost his whole body. Luckily, Ed managed to stick his brother's soul in a suit of armor, but still. Yep. Thanks. This horrible experience has... Long as a primary source for analysis and by proxy the faithful 2009 Brotherhood anime adaptation, feats in the 2003 anime will be examined as supporting evidence, only disregarded if too far removed from the source material to be considered reasonably feasible. Feasible. <laughs> yeah, because I know they had to make up like a whole ending and stuff. Still a very good anime, though. No one is meant to transmute the human soul, and the boys were lucky just to escape with their lives. But he got something good out of it, like super secret knowledge, including how to do alchemy without a circle thingy. He just has to clap instead. I'd lose an arm and a leg for that. So, worth it? With these new abilities, Ed and Alphonse began their quest to restore their bodies. Specifically, they sought the incredible power of a Philosopher's Stone, believing it to be their only chance. Eventually, Ed joined the military, and thanks to his amazing potential, he was Despite named Despite being nearly young and hot-tempered... Wait, wait, what? Adolf Hitler? Nah, it's just Bradley. He's okay. Until he isn't. Until he isn't. Also, since Ed lost a couple limbs, he got them replaced with auto mail. Never. Like Never. Auto mail is made from it's incredibly the, durable it, metal, leader? ranging from his original steel one to a gas-powered one to his best version, consisting of a mix of aluminum and carbon. Apart from being nice. durable metal prosthetics, Ed's auto mail limbs function just like normal ones. He can even reshape his arm as a weapon, so he can turn it into swords and saws. Okay, so Ang doesn't know metal then. Uh, well, of course, he... <sighs> Sorry, there was a hair on the camera. <laughs> Frickin'! Nuh. Okay, so he can't do that. Stuff. Increase its durability by hardening its makeup, or turn it into an umbrella! Ah, truly a limb of many talents. He's gonna be doing that day, during the battle. His true talent lies not in sword fighting or umbrella holding, but the art of alchemy. He can do all sorts of crazy things what? with all the elements. He can basically make anything he wants, like spears and shields. Now, with all the elements, including, does he have to know about the element first? Or, like, can he manipulate stuff that hadn't been... Um, fully stu studied and discovered by that point. As long as he follows the rule of equivalent exchange. Anything created with alchemy must have a source of equal value and cannot be made fundamentally different. For example, lead can be molded into a statue, but it cannot be turned into water. Other than that, there yeah. are three principles needed to use alchemy well. Comprehension. Which means you gotta understand what the thing you're using is made of. Okay, so yeah, that answers my question then. He would have to 
Study each element. Breaking stuff down. And reconstruction. Putting stuff back together. Ed is only limited by the materials at hand and his imagination. Ed Conservation is of mass. He can do almost anything. He can purify water, create ammonium gas from ammonium nitrate, repair entire houses, <laughs> and transform a gun into a trumpet. Don't you ever try and do that with any of my guns. Anyway, <laughs> Ed's also learned destruction alchemy, which does exactly... Okay. And has never used destruction alchemy on a human target. He is acutely aware of its capabilities. Scar has used it against people to great effect. Exactly what you think it does? Make a big old kaboom! Yay! It's used to destroy stuff like auto mail, but it can also be used to explode people's heads! So, using destruction alchemy, Ed should be able to destroy something like this on a molecular level. Ha! Or you could just do that. Anyway, with all of his abilities, Ed has done some incredibly impressive things. Not only has he blocked gunfire from a Gatling gun after it started firing, he's Ooh. dodged a pistol from nearly point-blank range, and his automail arm even took a bite from a lion-headed chimera. It was totally Ooh. fine! Assuming this chimera Don't chimera is tend to be lion -headed? to that of a real lion, that means Ed's arm stood up to a force Oh, what happened to lion's forehead there? He's created a gigantic cannon and then survived that cannon exploding while and he was decorated standing it. on it. And then he survived being on top of a huge boulder exploding too. We can measure the boulder. You know, one of the things I like about Full Metal Alchemist is it's a serious show that doesn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> you know, they they act like real people, you know, they're not brood 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 all the time. You know, it's even when they're having all these problems in their lives and in society and everything they're still you know they still know what the hell every time i touch it it's explosion against Ed's open up a menu screen. with a radius of 36 feet this blast must have been equivalent to over a hundred tons of tnt nice How's that for equivalent exchange bitches he also survived an explosion that took out most of a 10-story building even apart from being tough, Ed has shown considerable strength when using alchemy. Like when he created a gigantic golem to crush his opponent. By measuring the size of the stone golem's thumb, comparing it to the size of the average human's thumb, and using that scale to estimate the size of the golem, that gives us an estimated weight of over 3,000 metric tons. Ow. All this without any philosopher's stone, because it turns out those things are really, really messed up. Right. Philosopher's stones are extremely powerful and can be used in many different ways. Kimberly, the Crimson Lotus Alchemist, for example, used one to create a massive explosion equal to 157 kilotons of TNT. Nice. However, it turns out that these stones are composed of imprisoned human souls. So Ed and Al vow to avoid them on principle. Although Ed can boost his alchemic power in a similar manner by drawing on his own life force. Wow. Increasing his potential at the cost of shortening his lifespan. But that's what Ed ultimately had to learn. What it truly means to let something go. And so he found another way to revive Al's body. Sacrificing his own power for the sake of family. Aw, what a nice guy. But all in all, so long as Ed knows what he's trying to transmute, he's an amazing force to be reckoned with. Now let's go home together. Ad. I don't want to see an ad. Grandma's making stew. Oh, Fuck yes. yeah! Of an ancient warrior past. <laughs> it's got to be the most famous outfake of all time. Set, and we've run the day all okay, so there's going to be a food vendor. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery. No! Okay, so I don't know. I still think that I still think that Aang has the advantage here, especially since he can call upon the powers of all previous uh, air of all previous Airbenders, uh, all previous avatars rather. But um. Huh. They didn't get into what Ed's reaction time is. Um, I assume it's pretty fast if he can d roll on top of that giant boulder. But then that's also running. He couldn't react to the explosion that fast. 
but he could also uh, block bullets after the gun had already started firing. Hmm. But then again, bullets don't move as fast as lightning. Hmm. But then again, Aang can't use the lightning attacks. So I guess that doesn't matter. He, can, he just has the reaction speed to guard against them. Uh, one question, though. Um, what are the properties of auto mail? I mean, it can obviously be melted like any other metal. Uh, and it did say what it was. It's an alloy of some kind. <laughs> I'm not going to go back and find it. But anyway, it's an alloy that can be smelted. So what would happen if you really turned up the heat on that thing? Would that melt? Of course, if Ed actually, if he lost his arm and leg in battle, he'd probably be hopping around on his other leg going, Get back here! I'll bite your knees off! <laughs> uh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still going to go with Aang. Um, I still need to watch that show. And he st I still need to finish FMA. I really do. Was it obvious that I hadn't finished it yet? Okay, so let's just go ahead. Woo! These heads are those. I know they're wigs, but they have Sorry, faces. Momo. You're just too little. <laughs> little? Who are you calling a pet squeak, you stupid hairless kid? Uh, nobody? I'll show you! Wait! <laughs> It's just not even wigs, it's just stone heads. Nice effects there. Oh, that was cool. You know, there are actually a lot of advantages to being short. Like, you'll never hit your head on door frames, and uh, I'm still growing! <gasps> now I gotcha. Ah! Oh no! I'm sorry! I remember those. And they even had his hair flippy on it. Oh crap! How's this for small? Ah! <laughs> what kind of alchemy is that? Blasting right through the ball, that was cool. Sorry, I'm still taking everything in. Okay, I like this electric. My cabbages. Oh, my cabbages. <laughs> I won't lose you again. That cabbage guy is just destined to just go into another I occupation, buddy. You know, That's maybe right, sell them sorry. two others to sell. I like the perspective shots there. Can't believe that worked. It didn't work, buddy. Avatar State. This ends now. At least I'm taller than you. <laughs> At least I'm taller Looks than you. Like he didn't even Nobody try to get away, him. though. Or arm, I guess. He could have may still have tried to shield himself. And he certainly had I'm going to be in my form of combat experience today once he entered the Avatar State. I don't know what it is. Lately, I've been messing up my words a lot. It's really bothersome, in fact. 
accessing the memories of all previous avatars across 10,000 years. So basically, basically he suddenly has the intersect from Chuck. The it's a really cool series, by the way. Had more combat experience, but Aang's bending abilities were far more versatile and readily available than combat alchemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had cool stuff like cannons and gun trumpets. Just a moment. It... Still finishing. You got me just when I'm finishing up. <laughs> it's some debatable lightning timing feats. They're less clear and consistent than Aang's, and therefore less reliable for an argument. Aang's better mobility and seismic sense. It's still given the edge and speed regardless. And I forgot he had seismic sense. Okay. Which is way faster Ooh, than dodging a measly me. bullet. Recall how Ed survived an explosion that destroyed most of a 10-story building. By examining the size of the building and thus the volume of the conic... Oh, you're spoiling us. That is not something to tell us right away who his father is. <laughs> oh, God. Tower part Al steel body, really? Explosion. This blast must have equaled about 30 kilotons of TNT. That's cool, but Aang did way more when he carved up a circle around that city in Avatar State. The force to blast such a huge Makes sense. around the city of Yudao was a massive undertaking. By measuring the width, length, and depth of the affected area compared to the size of the city, we found it would take almost 160 kilotons of TNT to pull that off. More than five times greater than Ed's best or Okay, closest feet. Uh, close. <sighs> this is really frustrating. I just can't process my words. Closest Ed ever got to experience in this level of destructive force was from Kimberly, who nearly killed him. Even if Ed could miraculously survive this level of power, past incarnations of the Avatar are feats of volcanic eruptions calculated to be in the gigaton range. So that should have destroyed the entire surrounding area. Ability feet. So Aang definitely had the stuff to crush Ed's automail arm and the rest of him. Granted, Ed could reach the sort of power by sacrificing his life force. Remember Kimberly's explosion, the one empowered by a philosopher's stone, a blast worth 157 kilotons of TNT? That's almost identical to Aang's feat. And theoretically, Ed could have been capable of this level of power. Theoretically. However, a philosopher's stone uses mm. many souls, while Ed could only draw from his one. Not Alchemy to is kind of all about theoretical, isn't it? A very isn't short it? and dangerous duration limit compared to the Avatar state, which has no such limit. But even so, Ed's tactics and creativity kept him in the fight, yet the Avatar's speed, power, and versatility was too much for him. Aang may be a pacifist in canon and would hardly kill anyone, but unleashing his full power is a sight to behold. Just when Ed thought he had the hang of it, he alchemist the mark. <laughs> The winner Boo. is Avatar Aang. More ads. I've been saying to myself, how are you More in this ads. Oh my god. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle if you want the battle me. You know, just a little thing. I know people were saying, like, oh, well, Rooster Teeth is going to make Ed lose because they fired Vic Mignogna. And it's like, what the fuck? No. One, that was only, what, this year? They would have had to have at least had this battle scripted several months ago. Like, at least by February. Like, probably at the absolute latest. Um, although, I still don't understand why they fired him. I mean, all the allegations are just that. And it's just like... You know, if he's guilty, then by all means, fire him. But so far, all we've got is he should, he said, she said. And from what I understand, no one's actually put forth any physical evidence. Or, I don't know. It just seems people feel like they can say whatever they want. And it's just bizarre. Anyway, I'm going to move this over here so we can get whoever is next time yourself and you get it by clicking the link down below and if you like to it was okay i didn't really death, make sure to click the, the link over there let's ride Ooh, ghost rider versus lobo oh that's gonna be fun oh that's gonna be fun okay granted i don't know much about ghost rider um Lobo's great, though. I mean, on the Superman animated series. Um, uh, God, why can't I remember the name of his voice actor? He was the guy who played Raymond Bru Raymond's brother on Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was neat. Um, I'm sorry I'm not 100% for it. I, this bed is real squeaky. You'll probably hear it. And so I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. And it's now about 8 p.m. And yeah, I've been walking around all day. And my legs hurt. And I've had to deal with a crying baby all day. Oh. Anyway. I thought that was fun. The animation kind of varied heavily in quality, though. Um, I thought it was kind of a foregone conclusion, though, that Ed was going to lose. Um, just from what little I know about Aang. Um, I know about the Avatar state. And I know that it... I didn't know it was every single previous Avatar. But I, I only actually saw a little bit of Korra as well. Um whew. Yeah. Mm. But um, I know that she can converse with, I think it was the first Avatar or something like that. I know she can talk with some of them. Um, I know we see um, Aang as an old man. Um, I mean, he's died before the Korra series. Otherwise, Korra wouldn't have, it wouldn't be an Avatar. But yeah. Um, I know Toph is still alive. Um, I know, um, uh, Katara is still alive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Toph's daughter is, like, the head of the police force or something like that. And they, uh, mm. <laughs> um, actually, my first thought when I watched Korra was... This is the same animation studio that does the boondocks, isn't it? <laughs> That's another fun show. Uh, it's not nearly as political as the comics, but in some ways that's a good and a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's no way that that hair flippy is nearly as tall as that. I mean, if he's only four foot eight, that would not be five three. <laughs> uh. anyway though like I said I hope this posts um, I really 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 hope it posts because I'm looking right here at the death battles page and Gohan vs. Superboy is sitting there taunting me Ooh. <sighs> needless to say I'm still mad about that, Rooster Teeth. You really need to think about who your fan base is. Anyway, tomorrow I will be back with Athena and the babies. Fortunately, budgie babies and not screaming 19 month old human. You guys, do you guys want to take her off my hands just for a few hours? I think my sister would appreciate it too. 